Welcome everyone to Beacon of Hope Ministries this morning in Clearwater, Florida. This is Pastor Marcia McAllister. We've had some technical issues this morning, but we are not going to stop. We're going to press right on through with the word that God has for us today. This is a very special day, and um, it almost feels like the devil's been really working overtime this morning. Would you all agree yeah. with some of the power outages problems we've had here in the sanctuary? But we are going on and giving you the number 45 for this series for, uh, forevermore. And guess what? It's the last one in this series for now. We might revisit forevermore another time. You never know what God has in store. I'm excited about today. Uh, rejoicing, joy, and delight forevermore. If you have been tuning into this series, you will understand that we've been talking for weeks now, actually the whole year, the whole year, about what heaven will be like. And so the title is forevermore because forevermore, when you go to heaven, that's forever and ever. And our minds cannot even begin to imagine something that lasts forever. We don't, we don't, we can't understand that. So it all has to do with God's resurrection power and the fact that he raised Jesus from the dead. I've made this point over and over again in this series. If God had not done that, we have no hope of heaven. Okay? There's no hope without the resurrection of Jesus. And if you're one of those out there that doesn't understand or believe that Jesus came out of the tomb, a risen Lord, because go back and listen to these posts because we've really made a big point of that. We're going to Luke 24 again where we've been different times in this series. And um, Jesus, remember this? Jesus in his resurrected body, he came out of the tomb sometime a little after 6 p.m. on Saturday night, which began, which was the end of the Sabbath. So at that point, Jesus came out of the tomb, the resurrected Lord, and he began to do all kinds of quiet, really cool things. And one of those things was what he did on the road to Emmaus. Y'all know about the road to Emmaus. We've talked about it a lot in this series. It's that there were a couple guys that were part of the, the group that followed Jesus that were very upset because Jesus had died on the cross three days before, right? And they were still recovering from that and probably never would recover from that. They were just a mess. And they're walking on the road to Emmaus about a seven-mile journey. And guess who just suddenly starts walking with them? I love this. It's Jesus in his resurrected body, right? And so if you let's just pick up on Luke 24, verse 25. Then Jesus said to them, because they tell him how, how upset they are. All this has happened. And he says, O oh, foolish men and slow of heart to trust and believe in everything that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and only then to enter his glory? So he's explaining to these two travelers that are walking and they're very sad and upset. Wait a minute, this had to happen. Now we're in verse 27 of Luke 24. Then beginning with Moses and throughout all the writings of the prophets. Now this is a long trip, okay? And they're walking. And he begins with Moses, and then he begins to explain in the writings of the prophets, interpreted for them the things referring to himself found in all the scriptures. He's saying, now this is about the Messiah. Now this scripture is a prophecy about the Messiah. Now this is about the Messiah. Okay? And he's doing all that. And then they get to the town where they were going, right? The road to Emmaus, so it was Emmaus. And in verse 30, he was, they invited him in for dinner and to stay. And so he's sitting there reclining at the table. He takes the bread, and what does he do? He blesses it, prays over it, breaks it. He began giving it to them. Okay? Now, Jesus is the bread of life. That's one of his names. I am the bread of life. Okay? He was broken, right? This is so symbolic. He was broken for us, for all of our sins and sicknesses and everything else. And as we take that bread... We begin, he begins to give us, you know, like he did right here. Suddenly, he is giving it to them. Guys, what he does is you begin to get a, a real clear picture of what Jesus did when he walked this earth. Then he begins to give to you insight. He begins to give to you revelation knowledge. You begin to understand the word like you never have before. 
And then in verse 32, they said to one another, because you know what happens to him in verse 31? After they recognized him, he vanished. <laughs> the resurrection body said, you know what? I'm going someplace else. I got other things I got to do. I got you right here. I got your attention. He vanishes. And they said, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road and opening the scriptures to us? Guys, what God wants to do in us today, right now in this sermon, and, and, and as you read the word, is God wants to open to you new right. understanding. Right. He wants you to see things you've never seen before. He, that's called the rhema word of God. When a verse comes out and hits you in the head, right? And you're like, oh, that's for me. Okay? That's the word. God wants to do that right now in this part. 45, last sermon in the series at this point. And he's talking. Now, let's go on. And um, that very evening, he goes and appears to the disciples. He goes right through the wall. Remember this? We talked about this. And uh, he starts talking to them. And then now we're in verse 36 of Luke 24. He suddenly stood among them. Bang, there he was. So what does that say about the resurrection bodies we're going to have? Yeah. We're going to have superpowers. Okay? Peace, he says to them. Peace be to you. First thing he says to them is peace. Anybody here need some peace today? Yeah. For what you're going through? Yeah, I'd say we all do, right? Yeah. And then in verse 39, and we just took communion. So, you know, in communion, we remember what Jesus did on the cross, right? How he allowed his body to be broken for us, correct? And it says right here, look at the marks in my hands, is what he says, to, and my feet. So the disciples are like, oh my gosh, can you, I want you to put yourself there. You're in this room, you're, you're crying and you're weeping and you're grieving because, because the, you know, Jesus went to the cross, he died. But now they've already heard stories from Mary and some of the others that when they went to the tomb, he was missing, he was gone, right? And so here they are. And he says, look at the marks in my hands and my feet. See that it is me, myself. Touch me and see. A spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. Okay? Now, our resurrected bodies will have <coughs> flesh and bones. Okay? Remember, we've made this point all through the series. You're not going to become a little spirit flying around. On a cloud. You're not going to become an angel. You're not going to become a baby angel sitting on a cloud. As cute as that might be, that's not who you're going to be. Okay? And then Jesus goes on in verse 45 now. Why don't you look at verse 45 of Luke 24. Then he opened their minds to help them understand the scriptures. Okay? Now, if this whole topic of 45 weeks of talking about heaven and where we're headed, if this has kind of been hard for you to digest or understand, ask God to open your mind so that you begin to understand these truths like never before. Because he opened their minds and he says, And so it is written that the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. He explained to them this is the plan. This was the plan. It's still the plan. And that repentance for forgiveness of sins, verse 47, would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. Now that is what God's been saying to us all through this 45 weeks. We keep saying, wait a minute, it's all about getting a relationship with Jesus, right? Yeah. It's all about knowing that you know that you know that God loves you and has a plan for your life. That's what this is about, okay? And it's about realizing that you have to ask forgiveness for your sin. Now, there's people that push back on that. What, why should I? I mean, I'm just a good person. Everything's good. I'm great. Blah, blah, blah. I don't, why should I have to ask forgiveness for sin? Because that's what Jesus said to do. Right. Ask to be forgiven of your sin, right? Now, do you just do that once and that's it forever? No, no, no. You've got to keep going on, right? Because every once in a while, maybe every day or every couple hours, we, we have attitudes, we have behaviors, we have sin in our lives that we have to deal with. You have to do mine. You have to all deal with mine. That's true. And the stuff happens. Yeah. Rocky just be. Yeah. No, no, just, just, that's okay. Just don't, don't comment right now because we're on Facebook Live, okay? So that's all right. You can comment later, okay? And now in verse 49, 
I love this, it's Luke 24. Listen carefully, he said, I am sending the promise of my Father, the Holy Spirit, upon you. But you are to remain in the city of Jerusalem until you're fully clothed, fully equipped with power from on high. How are we able to live this victorious Christian life? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit descended on the day of Pentecost, right? And it's up to us whether we receive the Holy Spirit. It's up to us whether we say, God, just come on all over me. Give me all you got for me. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what we do. That's what gives us the power to be able to live this life right now, as hard as it may be from time to time. Uh, go back with me to 1 Thessalonians. Uh, I just could not get away from this. Um, I This is not the way I was going to take this, this last sermon. Yeah, okay, who's it's, surprised? Nobody's surprised. They're not surprised. So if, as you're finding 1 Thessalonians, let me just give you some things that we've been talking about, some, some points that we want to make this last day. As we get older, our dreams begin to shrink. Now, my grandchildren say their nana has begun to shrink. <laughs> and they prove that because they have one of those little measuring things on the wall in Indiana. And when I come to visit, one of them will usually say, come on, Nana, let's stand you up against the tape just to see how much shorter you are this year. And they mean that, and they like to do that because the whole goal of that is so they can show me how much taller they are, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Right, which is cool because they are getting tall, tall, big. But let's talk about our dreams a minute because our dreams... Our dreams begin to shrink as we get older. You say, what do you mean by that? I mean the things that we have planned for our lives sometimes just aren't happening. And maybe they're just not happening the way we want them to happen. Our dreams begin to shrink. Our expectations, well, I guess I just got to settle for this in my life. We settle. Do we not settle? Yeah. Well, I guess I won't become this, or I'm not. That's not going to happen. Okay. And so, as that happens, we begin to get disillusioned. Would y'all agree? Yes. Now, here's where the work of God in our lives with this particular topic comes and rescues us, because in our own humanness, I'm still shrinking. Like my grandchildren know. I'm still shrinking that way. But my dreams here right now, they're not shrinking. Right. But for a lot of people, they do. Right? I, I acknowledge that. You know what happens when people's dreams begin to shrink? They get sarcastic. They get cynical. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And they get they get kind of like, man, you know, that kind of stuff. Right? Y'all, you've been around people like, man, man, man. Haven't you? I don't even have to put words to that. You know exactly what I just said. Right? That's right. Here's where the message of the forevermore, where we have the future to look forward to, comes in and gives us hope. Because we're not going to be like this forever. Okay? Even though our bodies here are getting older, maybe weaker, maybe we have issues going on in our bodies, we, this is not the only time we're going to live on earth. How many times have I said that during this series? Yeah. This is Earth 1. Yeah. But guess what? Earth 2 is coming. Earth 2 is coming. How, how about getting excited about that? And here's what's so cool about Earth 2. You are not going to struggle with certain things. You say, well, am I going to struggle with some things? Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Okay? The curse. Remember, we talked about this all through the series. The curse of the law is sin, sickness, poverty. Hmm. When the curse is reversed, what happens? We're not falling into the same pitfalls we always felt. Here's the good news about forevermore, where we're going to be. We're not going to go into those same old problems. We're not going to have those same old hang-ups. We're not going to have those same old sin problems. We're certainly not going to have the sicknesses. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. Okay, you're not going to walk around with cancer in your body or 
bad migraines or anything else because you are going to be totally, completely in your new resurrection body. Come on, let's get excited about that. Come on. So our inheritance, part of our inheritance is the curse is reversed. Okay? It's reversed. It doesn't apply to us anymore. We're not going to deal with sin anymore. Yay! Amen. We're not going to, what, come on, we're not going to worry, we're going to deal with worry, fear, no, no. doubt, no. anxieties, no. anxiety attacks, panic attacks, no, okay, illness that comes on us just suddenly, or, or whatever, or relationships that don't work out, none of that's going to happen, guys, forevermore we are going to live with him in earth too. Because the new Jerusalem's coming down, remember? We talked about that a couple weeks ago. If you missed that, go back and get that. Okay? So our true destination, if you write things down, you need to write this down. Our true destination is resurrected bodies on a resurrected earth. Is this old earth passing away? Yes, yep. it will. It'll be gone. Okay? But you know what? Your dreams... And your adventures that you couldn't do here, maybe you've had limitations due to physical problems or mental issues or just circumstances in your life, jobs that didn't work out and this didn't work out and you lost this in this situation and you lost that and that. Loss is a thing of the past when we live on earth too. You're not going to lose anymore, okay? You're going to only gain, okay? I've known people who through the years have just made tremendous financial decisions and things have gone their way and they're sitting on tons of money. I've known people like that in the past. And then I know people like me who lost a lot in the crash of 08, the big recession, the great recession, and other things like that. There's a lot of people have lost a lot. Would you say that? Yes. Yeah. Amen. A lot of times we like to lose weight, but I'm not talking about that kind of loss. I'm talking about losses in relationships, losses financially, all kinds of losses. Here's what's going to happen in Earth 2 and the new heaven. Here's what's going to happen. Your dreams and your adventures will expand. You're going to get to do things you always wanted to do. You say, how literal does that mean? Uh, I, the more I read, the more I think this new Earth is going to be so amazing. Okay? Is there a scripture that says the sea? You know, right now, two-thirds or three-fourths of the earth is water and oceans. Right? Did you know that? Yeah. Okay? All that's going away. Okay? There will be seas, there will be lakes, there will be rivers, but we're not going to have that vast waste of space there where there is all that <laughs> ocean now. Right? It's going to be more beautiful than anything you've ever seen. So, I've never even been to the Grand Canyon. Been to the Grand Canyon? Is that just gorgeous or what? Right? Uh, my youngest son, Mark, and Candy went there on their honeymoon, and they came back, when they got off the plane, I picked them up off the plane, and they had a book in their hand that they'd been reading on the plane. It was all the people who had died that fell off the edge of the Grand Canyon. I said, seriously, you've been reading this on your honeymoon? Are you guys bored or what's going on? You're reading a book about all the people who died. He goes like, they said, yeah, listen to some of these stories. They just backed up in the picture and somebody said, back up just a little bit so I can get all of you. And bam, one of them fell off. And I mean, stuff like that, which is just like, bong. I mean, but these are true stories. There's a whole book on it. All the people who died in Grand Canyon who just like slipped off the edge. You know what? That none of that is going to happen. In heaven, on the earth too. You're not going to have to worry about a slippy, slipping off the edge. There's a new commercial now. This guy is driving this truck. And, he's, and then he stops exactly. And when he gets out, he looks and then he look over. And it's yeah. like way down. Have you seen that commercial? Yeah. And I'm thinking, why were you driving your truck up there anyway? You know? But anyway, those kinds of things are not going to happen. You're not going to fall into temptation. You are not going to fall into sin. You are not going to commit the same mistakes you made down here. The dreams you had are going to be fulfilled. Can anybody get excited Amen. about that? Amen. Come on. Earth 2 is going to be a whole lot better than Earth 1. But it's going to be gorgeous. Gorgeous. Mm. Your inheritance is God and our home heaven, right? Last week our title was 
Created for a person and a place. You are created. You've been created for the person. The person is God. You're his if you belong to him. Okay? You are God's. And a place is heaven. Where we're headed. That's the place. Whoa. Okay. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 for a minute. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Then Paul says this. You know, and I've got a little note here on this that says that we started this series on 1321 with this passage. And I did not know that when I turned to this and God said, go there to 1 Thessalonians 4 the other day when I was studying. I did not remember. I started the series with this. So I think it's pretty fitting to end this series with this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Now, we do not want you to be uninformed, believers, about those who are asleep in death. Do you know anybody who's dead? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, there are some 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. We all know some people that are dead, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. I have parents, grandparents, relatives, right? So that you will not grieve for them as the others do, who have no hope beyond this present life. It's natural to grieve when somebody dies, right? Yes. But a deeper grieving we should not be doing, Christians. Yes, we're going to grieve our loss that, oh, now my mom is not here. I can go see her every day. But you know what? That, that we need to get down on the inside of us. We're going to see him again. You know, people will say, oh, you'll see him again. And a lot of people use that phrase, and I wonder, are they Christians? Do, are they really going to say them again? Or is that just something to make them feel better? Right? Look at verse 14. If we believe. Oh, wait a minute. If yes. we believe. If. It's one of these then, if then statements. If we believe. Right? If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, we're going to give you, Facebook audience, another opportunity today. If you don't know for sure that you could go to heaven if you die today, tomorrow, or any other time. We'll give you that opportunity to declare that you believe. And so 14, verse 14 of 1 Thessalonians 4 says, If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, as in fact he did. I teach out the Amplified Bible now. As in fact he did. Okay? As a fact, he did. He died and he rose again. Even so, God in this same way, by raising them from the dead, will bring with him those believers who have fallen asleep in Jesus. Now, let's go over this one last time here in this series. When you die, some of you stays here and some of you goes there. Let's make sure we understand what goes where. Right? Your body stays here. Everybody agree with that? Okay? When you die, your body's going to go into a casket or, or an, urn. an urn on somebody's mantle. Okay? Or a chain. Mm -hmm. Or somebody's, yeah, a necklace around somebody's neck. Yeah, whatever. Okay, but what's going to happen to your soul? You know, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says we are spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Your spirit is your heart, the part that belongs to God, right? Your soul is made up of three parts. Your, it's your mind, your emotions, and your will. Okay? So guess what goes to heaven? Your mind, your emotions, and your will goes to heaven, along with your heart. You say, what about my body? What am I going to look like? I believe God, and a lot of things I've been right, reading this whole series, God gives us a temporary body. So that we recognize each other. Because people recognize each other in heaven. They do. So even though you left the earthly one here, you have a temporary body in what we call the present or intermediate heaven where you will look like you. Remember, we made this point over and over again. You're going to have the same name. You're going to look like you. You may have changed your hairstyle by the time we see you in heaven. Or maybe not. You might look You might, yeah. You, a lot of people feel that you're going to look younger. Right. Okay, but, okay, so your body stays behind, your spirit and your soul, they go on to heaven. Okay, so listen to this. Verse 15, for we say this to you by the Lord's own word, that we who are still alive and remain, the ones of us who are still here, if Jesus comes back Tuesday and we're still here, all right, here we go. 
until the coming of the Lord, will in no way proceed into his presence, those believers who have fallen asleep in death. Okay? So who goes first into God's presence? The, the ones that have died, right? Okay? Verse 16, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Now, if we're still alive, how many times have we talked about this in this series? If we're still alive when Jesus comes back, whoa! It's going to be instantaneous. But also it says here, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout. Wait, oh, verse 15. We will not proceed those. Okay, verse 16. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the blast of the trumpet of God. Are you going to notice if Jesus has come back? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, how are you going to notice that? It's going to be on your TV. <coughs> Is that what you're thinking? No, it's like this right here. There's going to be the voice of the archangel announcing it, and the blast of the trumpet of God. Now, that's a big trumpet. Boom, 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 boom. Here he comes. Something like that. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Whoa. But look at verse 17. I'm in the Amplified Bible. I just told you that. And then I'm telling you that again for a reason. Verse 17. Then we who are alive and remain on the earth. Those of us who are still here. Will. And here's the word that Amplified puts in. According to the original Greek, if this was written in, we will simultaneously be caught up, raptured together with them, the resurrected ones, in the clouds to meet the Lord. Okay? In the air. And so we will always... Oh, wait a minute. And so we will... Always be with the Lord. Come on. Always be with the Lord. Everybody say, always be with the always Lord. Always be with the Lord. So at that point... Time that we understand as time is changed because it's not going to end with you being with the Lord. You will always be with the Lord. I hope you have a really cute outfit on like Miss G does today. When we go to heaven, right? Now, we're going to be half clothes. Yes, we are. I don't know if you get to pick them out or how that works, but for me, I know it's going to be comfy clothes. Verse 18, therefore, what are we supposed to do with this knowledge? What are we supposed to do? Comfort and encourage one another with these words. Concerning our reunion with believers who have died, we are supposed to be encouraging people. Guess what? You know, guess what's going to happen? Okay, I mean, you know, our circle of life, which we talked about a few weeks in this series. You're not going to get... You know, you're not going to get rid of me that quick, you know, right? Or you're not going to get rid of each other because it's part of your circle of life. Let's look at verse, chapter 5, verse 1. Now as to the times and dates, we don't know. The Lord is coming just like a thief in verse 2, remember? Yeah. Look, look down at verse 4. First Thessalonians 5, 4. But you believers, all you who believe in Christ as Savior and acknowledge him as God's Son, that's what makes you a believer i got to say this again. Number 45. I've been saying it for 45 weeks. I think I've gotten a couple more gray hairs in the process. But you believers, all you who believe. A believer is someone who believes. That makes sense, right? A believer is somebody who believes in Christ the Savior and acknowledges him as God's son. You're not in spiritual darkness nor held by the power of spiritual darkness, that the day of judgment would overtake you by surprise like a thief. Verse 5, you're not going to be, don't worry about the day of judgment and all this stuff happened like, and you just like, what if I don't know he was here? What if I didn't watch the news that day? It's not going to, no, no, it's not going to be like that. You're immediately going to be in the presence of the Lord for all eternity. For you are all sons of light, sons of day. We do not belong to the night, nor to darkness. So look at verse 6. Here's what we need to be doing, okay? And this is, yeah, this is so important. Let us not sleep in spiritual indifference. Uh huh. How can you sleep in spiritual indifference? You go, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, someday I'm going to heaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'm excited about it. No. 
That's sleeping in spiritual indifference, right? As the rest of the world does. But let us keep wide awake, alert, and cautious. Wide awake. In other words, set a, set a guard over your heart, right? Ask the Lord to show you if there's things in your life that you need to deal with. And deal with them, right? Don't walk around in spiritual darkness. Walk around excited that the day of the Lord is coming. Yes. Right? Yes. Let us be sober, self-controlled, calm, and wise. This is what we need to be. Mm. Verse 8 of 1 Thessalonians 5. But since we believers belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope and confident assurance of salvation. This is what God has ordained for us to be. And I want you to look down at verse 11 of 1 Thessalonians 5. Therefore... Just ignore these words. Hmm. What? What? Did I say that? No. Therefore, encourage and comfort one another. Woo! When you have a situation in somebody's life that you're helping them get through, guys, encourage them and comfort. Give them comfort that this situation may be for a season here, but as soon as we are with God forever, Mm -mm, that's over. Right. That pain is over. Right. Therefore, encourage and comfort one another and build up one another just as you are doing. Mm. Are we building up one another? Mm. Because that's what we need to be doing. Amen. That's what it's all about. Ah, let's go. We're going to go clear over to uh, Isaiah. Let's go back to Isaiah here. Let's go to Isaiah. And I want to make a couple points I've made a lot this time, but in this series, but we already made the first one I was going to make, and that is you were made for a person and a place. Yes. So you are God's, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're made for a place. That new place is heaven. That's going to be your new dwelling place. The second point I want to make, and I made these clear back months ago, so listen to them. The moment we enter heaven, we'll know it's exactly where we belong. Have you ever gone somewhere and you just feel out of place? Yeah. Have you ever just been in a situation and you go, oh, I just wish I hadn't come to here in a day again. I just feel like I'm in. Yeah. Right? I just don't belong here. When you get to heaven, you're going to immediately know that that's where you belong. Third one. Everything that's happening to you right now has eternal significance. We're going to start talking more about that in January 22 in a new series called Belonging. That what we do right now has everything to do with rewards in heaven and all kinds of other things. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start talking more about that. But your life on earth right now has eternal significance. Don't just get through your day and I'm going to get through this day. No. Stop with that. Number four. Friendships begun on earth will continue in heaven. Remember this? Yeah. Now, here's a good thing about our dreams and our friendships. Okay? They're just for a moment, and then they're gone. Nope. Nope. Our dreams and our friendships, guess what? They get richer and richer and richer in heaven. Our dreams become bigger and bigger and bigger. Our adventures, our adventures will be amazing. Oh, my. Hmm. All of it gets richer and richer and richer, okay? When you get to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he becomes for you so much more than you ever thought God could be for you. Because so many people are tunnel visioned on, oh, I just got to get to heaven so I don't go to hell. You know, that's where their vision is. It's right there, tunnel vision. Got to get to heaven. Got to make sure I get to heaven. That's my ticket out of here. Got to get to heaven. And we don't allow ourselves the ability or we don't grow the relationship with God down here like we should. Because we're just focused on getting to heaven so I don't die. I don't go to hell. Right? Guys, what you're doing right now, you're planting seeds. Okay? For your future. So important that your priorities are right. It's so important that you're reading the word and getting it down on the inside of you. It's so important that you're learning to show love to others. It's so important that you're, you're not just tunnel vision on a particular problem in your heart or in your life. Guys, this is straight off of God's boiler point report, uh, the pot right now. 
I didn't intend to say this. Some of us get so tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. Have you ever looked through the binoculars, you know? I have a pair of binoculars I have that when I go to raise games, if I get have to sit way up, then I can look and, you know, because I like to see, you know, how cute they are. So I look at those players, you know, I look at them through the binoculars. Right. But when I take the binoculars off, I can't see them very well. I can't see how cute they are. I just know they are because I've seen pictures, right? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but yeah, guy watching. But the binoculars kind of focus in, and I can kind of adjust it, and I can just see better. You know, oh, he is cute. Yeah, um, all that kind of stuff, right? Talk about KK. Yeah, I'm talking about. I am talking about Kevin Kiermaier. Yes, I am. He is a sweetheart, and he is so cute. And and you know what, guys? We do this in our lives here. We get so focused or just on this little stuff, that we forget there's so much more out here. We're just trying to see about this. I just gotta, I gotta fix this. One thing I read this week is said this, when you really get this down on the inside of you, you quit trying to be a fixer. Because you're giving your burdens to God all the time. You can't fix, I cannot fix Nan as much as I have tried. And as much as Connie has tried. Have we not, Connie? For years, we have just, we just, oh, finally, one day we just said, oh, God, here's Nan. We can't fix her. And look at her. She's much better since we quit trying to fix her. God did it. God did it, Miss G. And here's what we do. We get our, we're just so focused. I want to see how cute he is. Or I want to see how about this. I want to see that. And we get ourselves so focused on little trivia crapola. Woo. Mm -hmm. When we need to be working on our relationship with God and learning the word and getting stronger in the word and the promises of God so we can share those when the door opens for us to share with somebody. We got something down in here to share. Oh. Praise God. Number five. Oh yeah, 51. We just aren't there yet. God orchestrates our lives, who we are blessed by here. People are not in your life as an accident. They are the ones who are going to be a part of your circle and be with you in heaven. Our relationships were appointed by God. They will continue in heaven. They'll get richer and richer. Is that cool or what? Yeah. You know, Pat, it's so cool that you walked in here again today because we just went over to our local place here to eat lunch a few weeks back and uh, walked in to the table that Becky was holding for a lot of us, and there was this person right here sitting there. <laughs> and Becky goes, hey, she was sitting over there at a table by herself, so I invited her to come over here and eat with us. Mm -hmm. How cool. Now, we're going to know you, and you're going to know us for all of heaven. All heaven. Okay? Because there's no, no coincidences. Right. You're in each other's lives for a reason. Right? Amen. right? Yes. Uh, are we going to be closer to some people than others? Yes, we will. J Jesus was very close to John, to James, to Peter. Right? He was really close to John. John wrote first and second, third John, the book of Revelation, the book of John. And he jumped to Jesus and John. They were just tight, right? There'd be so many we closer. I also think that sometimes some some of this will happen in heaven. Somebody you've never known on earth, you'll get to know in heaven, right. and you'll be really close. Have you ever met somebody that you just like, wow, I would never have thought that bond was that strong. You know, they became that strong. That kind of stuff's going to happen. And then we have to go to Isaiah 51 to wrap this up somehow. And we can't, you know what, we really can't wrap all this up. That's the whole thing here. There's so much to talk about. So Isaiah 51 says this. Verse 11. One of my favorites. It's an old song we used to sing at my church in Indiana. So the redeemed of the Lord will return and come with joyful shouting to Zion. You know what? You redeemed. If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've been bought back. The word redeemed means bought back. You're bought back by, by salvation. Jesus did that on the cross, right? And you're going to come with, oh, I'm so sad to be in heaven. I miss earth. I miss... Uh, nope, yeah. nope, nope. I saw a commercial the other day, and I thought, mm -mm, no, I'm not doing that. 
guy's driving along in his truck and he just decides to let the truck drive itself. No, not doing yeah. that. And he starts playing, you know, uh, you know, see, see that commercial, you know? Yeah. And everybody's driving down the road and they're all letting their cars drive themselves. No! No, 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 no. 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 Right? And so, uh, yeah. I mean, we, some, said, we said that about drinking water out of the bottle. That's right. We did say that. We did say that. So we may be doing it. We actually may be doing that, right? But my point is this, in heaven, we're not going to look back and go, I wish I was still here driving my car. No, no, no. Right. So we come with joyful shouting to Zion. How are we going to do this when we get to heaven, guys? We're going to be joyfully shouting. We're going to be so excited that we are there. And everlasting joy. That's what we're talking about. Everlasting joy, rejoicing, delight. That's what heaven's going to be like will be on their heads and they will obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Guys, that's leaving. It's all leaving. Go back to Isaiah 35 and I will wrap it up. I promise you, I think, I may, maybe not. I don't know. That's it's been a strange with morning with technical issues today, so we don't know. Verse Chapter 35 of Isaiah, verse 1. The wilderness and the dry land will be glad. All those times in your life that you felt wilderness. Wow. I'm just in the wilderness. Isaiah 35, 1. I'm just out there alone. Nobody cares. Whatever. Yeah. Verse 2. Isaiah 35, verse 2. It will blossom abundantly, the wilderness. Because heaven, everything's going to bloom. And rejoice with joy and singing. Wow. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The majesty of Mount Carmel. They will see the glory of the Lord. Look at verse 3. What are we to do now while we're still here? Encourage the exhausted. Right. That's what we're to be doing. I want to sign this series off with what we should be doing. It's your assignment, kids. We should encourage the exhausted and make staggering knees firm. In other words, help people be able to stand. And strong in what they believe. That's what we're doing. Why we've done all these posts. Nobody would have told. I would not have believed when I started this in January. That we would have had 45 of these on forevermore. But God had an idea that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Encourage and exhaust and make staggering knees firm. That's what the word does. That's what the word does. Verse 4. Say to those who are anxious and panic stricken heart. Be strong. Fear not. Right? Indeed, your God will come with vengeance for the ungodly. The retribution of God will come, and, but he will save you. Verse 5 of Isaiah 35. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened. Uh -huh. And the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Then the lame will leap like a deer. Woo! And the tongue of the mute will shout for joy. Uh -huh. For waters will break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Go down to verse 10. Isaiah 35, 10, and the ransomed of the Lord will return and come to Zion, that's heaven, with shouts of jubilation. What are you going to be doing when you get to heaven, guys? You're going to be going, OMG. But it'll be in a form of, oh my God, you are so amazing. Everlasting joy. Title of the sermon today. Everlasting joy will be upon their heads. Yeah. Amen. Everlasting joy. You know joy sometimes can be there and then, you know, then life happens and then our joy leaves. No, no. This is everlasting joy. Say it with me. Everlasting joy. Everlasting joy. Mm -hmm. Can't imagine being happy that long. Woo! They will find joy and gladness. Get ready, baby. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. It's there too. Yeah. Okay? Sorrow and sighing will flee away. What have we learned in this series? Heaven is going to be amazing. Praise God. It's going to be more than you ever dreamed about. Your friendships, your relationships that know Jesus are going with you. You'll be interacting with them. I think you're going to be having them over for dinner and stuff. There's going to be really... We're going to be living on earth too. And it's going to be amazing. And you are going to have such wonderful new experiences without any fear of death, without any fear of sickness, without any fear of loneliness, 
without any fear, not being accepted, feeling inferior, all that goes, it's gone, it's gone. Rejoicing, joy, and delight forevermore, forever, forever. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited about that. Pretty excited. It's been a strange day here at Beacon Day. <laughs> For real. We've had all kinds of internet problems, all kinds of situations have happened. But you know the bottom line is we've got the word out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. the word yeah. says, yes, the word amen. says, it's not over. Right. <laughs> if you die tonight, it's not over. No. If you're struggling with sickness right now, for some of you, we're going to pray over you in a minute. But you know what? It's not the end of the story. There's not going to be any sickness. Not going to be any doubt. Not going to be any hurt feelings. Mm -hmm. Not going to be any jealousy. Not going to be any rage. You're not going to go months without talking to people. Because heaven will be enjoying forever what life on earth was only in its Finest moments. You know, when you were like, had the whole future ahead of you, when you thought, oh, this job is it for me, or this person is it for me, or this, this situation is everything I ever dreamed of, and then life happened. The good news of this whole series is this is only our first life. Yeah. On Earth One. We're going to be living forevermore in the presence of Almighty God and with the friends and loved ones that we've loved here in bodies that are healed and whole. And yes, I think cuter. And maybe a little younger. I don't think you're going to have to worry about the wrinkles or anything like that. Your resurrected body is going to be really good. For those of you out there in Facebook land that are not certain Let's pray, Beaconites, that if you died tonight, you would be with Jesus. That you be in heaven. That you have that opportunity to live on earth one. If you're not sure of that, now's that moment to do that. We've done this 45 weeks straight. All we say to you is take this opportunity so that you don't lose out on the biggest opportunity of your whole life if you die without a savior. That's horrible. So take this opportunity. Pastor Jim will repeat every phrase after me. Mean it with sincerity. Okay? Dear God, I come to you now. Dear God, I come to you now. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son I of God. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe that Jesus died on a cross. For my sins and my sicknesses. For my sins and my sicknesses. I believe that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. I believe that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. I ask you now, Lord. I ask you now, to Lord. To forgive me for anything and everything. To forgive me for anything and everything. That I have ever said or done. That I have ever said or done. That was not pleasing to you. That was not pleasing to you. I invite you to come and live in me. I invite you to come and live in me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. This I pray now. This I pray now. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 Praise God. Glad you joined this Facebook family. And please share these posts. Please go to our new YouTube channel. All you have to do is open YouTube and go to... Our channel name, which is all caps, B-O-H-M, four capital letters, B-O-H-M, stands for Beacon Folk Ministries, space, global, those are little letters, and you'll find this whole series there, go back and watch it, share it, do whatever, technology is amazing, so you can watch the whole thing, yes, and, uh, and we have other things on our new YouTube channel, Pastor Jim's got a series, and he's got a new Facebook post coming up in just the last couple weeks, and those are getting a lot of hits, and he just did on Wednesday night here in Bible study that uh, the one that's on our YouTube channel. I want you to go look at it from this past Wednesday night, whatever date that would be, uh, 11 one, 
11.3. And it was about how do you know the Bible's true and how do you know that it's the inspired word of God. I encourage you to go listen to that. That's getting a lot of views. And guys, it's the absolute truth. Go watch that. Join Pastor Jim and Allie Garcia with me today on our radio show, which is every Wednesday, every Sunday afternoon at 3. Now in our 15th year, and all you have to do is go to YouTube, open it, and uh, put in Tan Talk Radio slash live. Tan Talk Radio slash live. And you can catch us today at 3 o'clock for two hour show. Great contemporary music, chat, teaching the word. God bless you. It's been Pastor Marcia McAllister. And forevermore, I've been teaching about heaven. But next Sunday, Pastor Jim will join you and teach while I'm out of town visiting my babies uh, way up in South Carolina. God bless every one of you. We'll see you very soon.